Minister Echoes, we should be live on Facebook. You all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Awesome. So we're live on Facebook and I've got one more thing to do here. Uh, so as soon as your dad sees it, we're ready to go. Awesome. Yeah. Here on, we got it. All right. <sighs> Good morning. Um, my name is Michael Eccles. I'll be today's facilitator for um, our Sunday school class. Um, today's title is The Nature of the Kingdom. I'm going to start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see a brand new day before us. Uh, we don't take today as, as, as a given. We know it's a gift because we, we call it the present. It's a present just for you. We can't say thank you enough for all that you've done for us, all that you do, and all that you will do. Please bless me today, Lord, so I can bestow a good lesson to the people that you've placed under the sound of, of my voice. Lord, um, please take over the lesson, remove me, make it all you. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so um, like I said, today's lesson is called The Nature of the Kingdom. The devotional reading was from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Background scripture for today's lesson is Romans chapter 14, verses 10 through 23. Um, so the book of Romans is written by Paul. Um, he's the one that um, wrote a good, good amount of the New Testament. This is a, a letter to the church started in Romans. It's one of those, one of the books that um, we like to focus the most on at our church because it gives the most um, doctoral principles for the church uh, for like kingdom building, um, getting along with our neighbor, loving one another, um, how we're supposed to uh, deal with not just the world, but deal with one another. Uh, there's a lot of people that see Christianity in different ways, but we got to remember it was, it's not uh, whatever uh, denomination we are, it's who we say who is God, who, the, who do we say Jesus is. Um, that's the difference between life and death, uh, eternal life or damnation. Uh, are you saying Jesus is God? Or are you saying he's a prophet? That's a huge difference. Um, and this this story, like this uh, whole lesson, I feel like I had a, I was pretty much living it this weekend. This week, um, ran to some friends that I hadn't seen in a long time, and we. Um, they came into the, the store that I worked at at a uh, um, time where I was dealing with a irate customer. And they came to me and said, how do you deal with people like that? And I was like, God, because um, no matter how disrespectful people can be, you got to realize you are the Christian in the room. People are looking at you and allow people of the world with your Christianity, with your relationship with Christ no matter what you should be showing your, that you are grounded in Christ and not grounded in the world. Uh, we can't react the same way other people react. Um, and it turned to me actually able to talk to them more about Christ because I know they know they know of Christ, but I don't know if they actually had a relationship with him. But we got talking, um, but to find out that one of their brothers just had brain surgery and he was first, like pretty much a week after recovering from the brain surgery, he wants to go perform at open mic competition. And I was like, that's such a great thing. I'd say, of course, I'm going to be there. I'm going there, be there to support him. But we didn't tell him that, we didn't tell him that I was going to show up. So it was just a bigger bright on his, brighter light on his face when he saw that I came to support him. And um, while we we're out, it was a bar and a friend that I talked to for so many years, we, the, one of the main reasons why we kind of fell out is because when he drank, he was a different person. Um, he's one of those people that um, as soon as maybe two beers, he was no longer the happy, go loving person. He was completely opposite. And seeing that he had that, he 
it took years for him to acknowledge that that's, he had an issue with the alcohol. He decided that he he quit alcohol altogether. Now he's doing so much better. Um, he's li- literally a living answered prayer of mine. When I was younger, I prayed for him and just prayed that he would be able to resolve those issues. And he has. Now he's like a professional golf player. He plays big phone all the way to Texas. And he's like literally like one of the best golf players I've ever seen in my life. And he li- loves, lives, and can do. He's actually living a dream, playing the game that he loves. He actually financially st- stable just by playing golf. Mm-hmm. And he's got sponsorships and all kinds of stuff. And that's all because God answered prayers that I, like, I was able to pray for somebody. And like God, it took years for me to see it come to know to come to fruition. But I just allowed me to see that He hears every prayer, mm-hmm. and it was a prayer that I had actually forgotten about. And I was reminded of the prayer when I was actually out with this man. And when we were at the bar, everybody around him was getting it, getting alcohol and everything. And he was getting, first time I ever heard of it, a mocktini. It's a, um, a drink that they make look like it's alcohol, um, but it's not actually drinking. It was um, cranberry juice and pineapple juice and like a spritzer or some kind of thing. I was like, if that's what he's going to drink, that's why I decided to drink as well, because I didn't want him to feel obligated to like drink with everybody else around him mm-hmm. not to mention it was like most of his family out there and they all not judging them but they were all drinking alcohol and i was just like you got this one man that he's got to feel isolated mm-hmm. and i was like you shouldn't feel that way so i didn't say it out loud but i was like give me whatever he's drinking because mm-hmm. i just felt like i'm not going to put any burden on him mm-hmm. and that's pretty i was that happened right before I started actually studying for this lesson. And I was just like, wow, um, God, you yeah, works in, he gives me lessons as I'm doing it. So I'm sorry for um, verse 14, verse 10. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Oh, chapter 14, verse 10 um, of Romans. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contentment? For we all will stand before God's judgment seat. So um, remember, we are Christians, so we're not going to be damned to hell, but we are going to be um, given judgment. We're going to be given crowns, or um, hopefully we can hear him say, well done, my faithful servant, or um, whatever. I know in previous lessons, we talked about how we're not supposed to be making uh, putting up treasures on this earth. We're supposed to be building up treasures in heaven and this is how we get our this is when we actually get our treasures back the the treasures that we're um getting back uh, we're, we're going to get our own crowns um i, I don't want to be the only shiny person up there i want everybody else to be shiny too um shine bright. shine bright like a diamond you know um but yeah and verse 11 it is written as surely as i live says the lord even Every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. Mm. So this is God swearing to his own name. When you um, put somebody, when when you, um, when people swear on something, when they put a a bow on something, they have to bestow it off somebody that's greater than themselves. Like you, like back in the day, me and my friends, I put that on my mama. Because nobody's better than mama when you're younger. Um, or like some people says on God. I I for myself personally, I don't put anything on God because I don't I don't want to endure any kind of judgment whatsoever. But um this is God swearing to his own name, meaning that it's it's a fact that it's gonna happen. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Um, and we see this all the way from, from um, the early prophets, all the way to the book of Revelation. Um, every, every tongue will confess. Everyone will be, um, if you don't humble yourself today, you will be humbled later. You might as well humble yourself and live in peace, joy, love, all the fruits of the spirit. Everything God gives us as a daily gift through the presence of his presence. <clears throat> Verse 12. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So remember, everything you do on the side, 
we can be re rewarded for it. Like everything we do, everything that we um, we do in God's name, it's not just to um, say that we did it, but yeah, we do it because it's supposed to be, uh, uh, we're not supposed to do it for the trophies, but we're doing it because we are Christian. But God's saying that you will be rewarded. Your, your efforts are going to be in vain. And I love a God that's willing to do everything for us through us and then give us credit for it afterwards because nothing we do is in our own, of our own nothing we do is of ourselves everything we can do is only because of his grace um simple fact i can talk today is a is a gift my parents were told that at a very young age that you never be able to understand a word that he says um just another one of the testimonies i have under a billion other testimonies but Everything that the doctors preached about me has been completely opposite. Um, I can't thank God enough for that. Um, they said I'll never be able to talk. I'll never be able to walk. I'll never be able to hold something. Um, I mean, whatever people pronounce on you, that, that's not fact. Only God has his final word. That's right. And if you find somebody, if you have somebody in your life, pray for them. If you have somebody that's going through something right now, pray for them. Um, Pray for, I thank God for my parents that prayed for me before I knew how to pray for myself. Simple fact that I have the ability to pray, but God knows the heart too. He knows the, the language of a tear. Sometimes it just got moaned. He understands. Verse 13, therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of your brother or sister. Mm, this is another thing. Whoever Jesus sets free is free indeed. But if your freedom will cause somebody else to stumble, you're no longer living within the love of Christ. Um, so, for instance, we, I had the right to drink alcohol that night. But the simple fact that I knew that I was sitting next to somebody that was an alcoholic, I chose not to do so because um, I didn't want to create a stumbling block for him. I didn't want him to feel like he had to start drinking because everybody else around him was drinking. Um, and that's the same kind of love that we should show one another. If you have a brother or sister that um, believes that they should still keep the dietary principles of the Jewish, oh, Jewish religion, um, where they're no longer eat pork, they um, abstain from shrimp, um, anything that's seen as unclean. But we'll get onto this. Um, there's no food that's unclean anymore. But if you have a brother or sister that feels that that is unclean, we should be mindful enough to not have them have unrighteous thoughts about us. Put them in the mindset of damnation, mindset of hate. Um, Hold anything against us because that's a slippery slope. Um, because if you hate, that's the same thing as murder uh, in Jesus' eyes. Um, we don't want to call somebody else to murder somebody, that's man manslaughter on us. Um, if we want to go to the full principles, but um, we also got to make sure that we're not um, doing anything on a regular basis that will be seen as um, unjust in the eyes of your fellow um, brother Christian or um, sister. Um, like if your job requires you to do something that you know you wouldn't do in front of Jesus, maybe you should be trying to find another job. If you're, um, if there's a, a, a habit at your job to get something done that goes against your own principles, you shouldn't do it because God gives us our intuition. He gives us the, um, the guiding, the, the guidance through the, um, Holy Spirit. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in. He starts directing your life. You got to listen to that conscience. That is Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit. That is God trying to talk to you directly. He's trying to guide us in all that we do. We just need to um, turn off some distractive words, the distractions of the world. Um, I know when I was going through my darkest times, I needed silence to hear that still voice. Um, I realized that so many years I've been listening to loud music that I, I was just tuning out Christ. I was tuning out the word. I was tuning out what was being spoken to my heart. 
once you to get rid of the distractions, that's when you get really close to God. Verse 14, I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. So let's say um, you get a lot of people feel like um, tattoos are a sin or even gambling is a sin. But in the Bible, there's no straight out answer, no straight word saying, hey, these are sins, do not do it. But if that's a conviction against you, you shouldn't do it. That may be something that um, God's trying to bestow on you. Um, because, yeah, we have a covenant as a, as a body, but we have personal covenants with Christ as well. Um, you have, once you start building a relationship with Christ, you, you will have conversations with him. Like, God, if, if you promise um, to keep me in this situation, I, I promise I'll do that for you. And that's one thing I had to go through myself. I made the prayer, Lord, if you allow me to walk again, I'll walk for you. That's how I got into ministry myself. Uh, the very next day, they came out with, oh, uh, we think we have a diagnosis. And that's how I got into in, to who I am today. Um, if it wasn't for that prayer, for that, that, that covenant I made with Christ, I don't know where I'll be today. Um, I could be just on uh, disabilities, laying home, just trying to feel my legs again. But God gave me full feeling, full, full use. Um, I can't complain at all. Um, the only complaint is that I don't have enough to complain about. Um, I can't thank God enough for it. Um, move on to verse 15. Well, before I go into that, um, that's another thing. Um, you have a lot of um, like Seven Day Adventists. Um, there's a lot of offshoots of Christianity that see different things as unclean. But I'm wondering what they what do they feel like when they get to scriptures like this? Um, some believe in eating nothing that's um, not natural. Um, don't believe in getting blood transfusions. Um, like I know a lot of people that would be dead today wouldn't have the ability to bless other people if they never got a blood infusion. Um, and God created man, so why wouldn't He trust man's invention like god made it a, a way to actually do blood transfusions he 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 gave us the ability to create this technology like without the medication the technology of today without god blessing it it would never exist if god decided not to have a blood transfusion if he deemed it as a curse he wouldn't allow it to happen in the first place he wouldn't allow it to save people's lives on a regular basis um the simple fact that chemo is a possibility is in, in my mindset, like cleaning blood, like that's, it's a miracle of its own. The second, I, I don't know any science behind it, but I know a God that knows beyond that science. The, the God that gave the ability for somebody to actually be able to understand that science and to build upon it. Verse 15, if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone of whom Christ died. So if I get invited out to a Jewish friend's house, I'm not going to bring pork chops. I'm not going to do something <laughs> as, as a, like, I'm not going to do something <laughs> that's going to obviously like offend them Although they're not, they're not in the same covenant that I'm under. I have the liberty, but I'm going to do it with fluidity. I'm going, to, I'm going to act out in the proper way. I'm not going to, like I said, if I if I go to a friend's house, and I know he's an alcoholic. I'm not going to bring a big bottle of my favorite like Ciroc or whatever. Um, but it's all in Christ. Everything we do, we need to do out of love, because um, God called us, brought us all here to love one another. Love that brother as you love yourself. Remember, you also got to learn how to love yourself too sometimes. Because we can be our own worst enemies. Verse 16. Therefore, do not let what you know is coming. It's no is good be spoken as evil. So um, 
that that's that's a strong word of his own. So even if you know that you have liberty to eat that pork chop, you don't damn you don't damn all pigs. You don't um you don't say like this this meal is evil, but walk in truth. You know that it would um, offend somebody. It would have somebody thinking unjustly about you. Just don't do it. But you don't have to say it's evil of your of yourself. You don't have to just agree with them. Just agree. Yes, you do it in respect to them, but you're not going to do it um, maliciously. You're not going to do it as malicious to that thing. You're not going to just change your whole mindset over um, over a meal. Give me one second. Um, I'm moving on to verse 18 because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So once again, we're um, whatever we do, whatever we do, eat or drink, we need to do it unto God, um, and we're going to do it in a way that we're not going to. Um, uh, I'm going to miss verse 17. I'm going to go back a little bit. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So, once again, we're not going to... Um, yes, we're going to be respectful of others' wishes, others' mindsets. We're not going to do anything that's going to um, have them think malicious of you. But once again, we're not going to damn that thing just because they don't agree with it. Um, but when we eat and drink, we need to be doing it unto God. We got to um, do anything, anything that would cause um, your conscience to um, fight with a uh, wrestle in your own soul. Don't don't start that fight. Don't um, don't do anything that you feel like will cause an issue or um, bring unrighteousness upon you anything that will take away from your own personal righteousness your peace your joy if, if it fights your own joy you, you know yourself that you don't need to be a part of it you don't need to do it if you feel like it's going to cause any kind of rift between you and friends there's no point of doing it in, in the first place um is your freedom more important than love um just because you have the right to do so doesn't mean you should do it um And um, we got to remember that everything we do, Jesus does see. And we got to um, move in love in all that we do. Especially when we're dealing with people that don't know Jesus yet, because they need to know that there is a better way of living. Verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual um, edification. So if we're not peacemakers, um, as Christians, what are we fighting for? Um, I, I, I saw, uh, I did a study a while ago that was talking about the difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. A peacemaker is the person that will do everything to create that peace. Um, but the peacekeeper would just go with the flow. Um, we got to make sure that we're peacemakers. We got to make sure that we are doing everything to create the peace, not just going with the flow of the um, of the energy that's in the air. Because a lot of people go with this whole like vibe situation nowadays, and that's not of God. Um, we're supposed to, we're called to be different. We're not supposed to just go with whatever the world's going with because we need to stand apart. Um, because Jesus is a stable rock that we stand on. He's not moving. We're unmoving as well. I'm going to read verse 19. Let us therefore make every effort to do what we leads to the peace and mutual edification. So we are to be making, becoming those peacemakers. We need to do everything we can to create that peace. If we're in a hostile work environment, we should be making efforts to make it unhostile. Um, if you have a boss that you know is creating um, angst between coworkers, you don't have to go with that flow. You don't have to be that person that um, 
the feeds into that 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 egging on the um the competition that constant like it's me you versus you knows us together um even if you have a mutual boss unfortunately um you have to come with a mutual love as well i don't want to make him the just because he's a bad boss doesn't make him the enemy but um whatever you do do out of love verse 20 do not destroy the work of god for the sake of food all food is clean but it's wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble so this is another reiteration like okay so you believe in um keeping the 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 first test, the Old Testament, the first testament, the first covenant. Um, so you're never gonna eat shrimp. Um, I love me some shrimp. I love crab legs. I love anything with crab on it. Put crab on crab, I'm sure you can go back in time. <laughs> um, but um, to some people that is a sin and that's a stumbling block for them. Um, exactly. Um, what, <laughs> my sister mentioned to me um uh, just mentioned like when we're on a diet individually it's hard but when we're on diets together we can stick to the diet um i'm not sure if anybody knows about the south beach diet but it's pretty much no carbs for the first three weeks no carbs whatsoever and um it, is, it does boost your metabolism you will lose a lot of weight but um it is very hard and it's especially hard if you you come home from working out and like drinking your um, your water and eating cabbage, and then you look over somebody's eating the biggest piece of cake you ever seen in your life, mm -hmm. and your eyes get big. And it's like, oh, that's that drug that I need to feel that I need that. Um, Jack that cake in directly into my veins right now. Um, just shoot me up, yeah, um, as they might say. But just because you have the right to eat that cake, you can move into the other room. You don't have to eat that cake in that in front of that person that is trying to lose weight. That person that's um, trying their best to not do what you're doing right now. Because um, I know cake affects me differently than it affects my skinny friends. Um, I smell sandwich game 10 pounds sometimes. But um, that's, that's, my, that's my situation. But it'll be so much easier for me if you see me as a brother and si or sister. Um, to, if, if you see me as a brother or you see your sister, <laughs> um, struggling with their diet, struggling with their um, with their edification themselves, that you don't do the thing that they're trying to fight. Mm -hmm. We need to be supporting each, of, each other directly. I'll move on to verse 21. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So once again, if you know that you're around an alcoholic, you know you're around a foodaholic, you know you're around um, like anything that anything that causes endorphins to go off in your brain can be addictive. Um, if you know you're around a gambler, you can't say like, "Oh, I bet you I can get to the car faster." Like that's just a simple bet, but that that leads to gambling. Um, that person that has a taste of gambling, that that um, that fiend for um, the extra energy. Oh, I put five dollars that you can't beat me to um, uh, step on, run all the way down the block and can't step on a crack. That's still gambling. Mm -hmm. It may be simple. It's not putting money on the ponies. It's not uh, putting money on the Ravens game that we just won last night. But um, <laughs> but um, it's it's still gambling, um, and that can lead to a more destructive lifestyle because some people can't just say no after one bet more frugal um if i go to a casino and i put five dollars down i lose that five dollars i just hate the rest of the day <laughs> so gambling is not my um my drug of choice it's not my weakness but other people say oh i gotta get that five dollars back let me double down oh i gotta double down because i gotta get that money back oh i finally won that's me that double money and that's how people lose their houses eventually they lose the cars they they that, that, that's uh, um uh, high that they keep on chasing, chasing, chasing that they'll never be able to resolve. Um, but the Bible doesn't say it's wrong to gamble, but if you feel like that is your weakness, you shouldn't do it. If God puts that against your conscience not to do so, you shouldn't do so. Verse 22, 
whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn them himself by what he approves. So this is saying that, yes, you have the right to do some things. You are free in Christ. Um, but if you feel condemned not to do so, don't do it. Because God will guide you through the Holy Spirit. It may not um, be a direct sin, but if it leads somebody else into temptation, that is a sin because you're not acting out of love. The last verse of this text, but whoever does has doubt is condemned if he eats because they are eating is not a faith and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Hmm. So this is reiterating if it goes against your own personal morals, if it goes against um, God puts this in your heart that you're not supposed to drink, but yet you do, you do drink, that does become a sin um, because God put in your heart that it is a sin. He, he, he's, he, once again, he, he has covenants with us individually, not just as a, as a church, but as, once you get a personal relationship with Christ, you will start to have your own covenants with Christ. He'll tell you what to do, what not to do. Um, I remember my dad was telling me years ago that um, he felt like when he out, went out dancing, that he um, he he pretty much would give him. He felt like he was pretty much giving himself to the music, not to Christ. And when he went out dancing and led to other relationships, it went to um, other things. And so he decided just to stop dancing because it was leading to other sins, and it turned to a sin in his own mindset because it was going against his um, moral obligations to Christ. To as um, it's a part of his relationship, but um, it, I'm not sure if he still has that same mindset because David danced, um, that he danced onto Christ. But if you're dancing in the world, what who are you dancing for? Are you dancing for yourself? Are you dancing to the music? Are you letting the music take control of you? Um, or is Christ still in control? Of you? Um, <laughs> and we gotta remember if even if it's just as simple as um. It's not a sin to technically smoke a cigarette, but yet you're you're destroying your own body. You're destroying the creation God gave you. Some people will feel, um, most people in my mindset would feel like smoking would be a sin because you're destroying God's temple because we are the temple once we accept Christ into our own bodies. Uh, same with alcohol. But um, if God doesn't place that on your heart, that is a sin. It doesn't technically make it a sin. Um, but we got to remember that anything that you put before Christ is an idol. So if you say that, oh, I can't go a day without the cigarette, is that cigarette now your idol? Do you pray more than you smoke cigarettes? I mean, these are all questions you need to ask yourself. It's all personal relationship with you and cross with God. And this is the time that we need to spend. This is a good word to spend meditating on and get a closer relationship with Christ on a regular basis with. Um, that's the end of my lesson. Um, I'm open the door, open the floor for anybody that has any comments, questions, anecdotes. That can bless us. <laughs> Brother Eccles, um, uh, Tyrone Campbell, I really appreciate your, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. I really appreciate your pre presentation. I have two sons, Tyrone mm -hmm. and Michael, and when they go out into the world, they reflect my their home training. Mm -hmm. And we have a father in heaven. And if we uh, consider ourselves to be walking epistles, so to speak, uh, meaning they can read us, they're reading not only them, they're reading their home training. So we as Christians should uh, should uh, be aware of the fact that the world is looking at us. And if we claim ourselves to be God's children, then we're going to have to act like God's children, because yes. whatever we do, they're going to say, well, that's how the family is. Well, whether you drink or whatever, whatever you, whatever, whatever you do, you reflect your home training. So, if God is your father and you know that God would not uh, like the things you're doing, then you're going to have to walk a certain way. And it's not that hard because God blesses His children. Now, you know, you're not out there to impress the people. 
You're out there to impress God. And by doing that, they'll see the love of God through your actions. I mean, you gave a good presentation, but it's mindful of me that when I go outside this house or my children go outside the house, they're reflecting Tyrone Campbell and his training. So uh, uh, I enjoyed the message and it's, and it's, it's reminding me that I've got to walk a certain way, the way God, the way the scripture says, walk as you are a, a walking epistle, a son of the living God, and reflect his character in the world. And that's what they say. Uh, thank you for your lesson. Amen. Thank you. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Um, when uh, we um, were going to... Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, when we were um, going through this, doing our Bible study some years ago, um, I was really surprised and studied this chapter and started really applying to my life. I was considering myself a strong brother, talking about the strong brother and the weaker brother. And when I got finished study, I realized that I was actually a weaker brother. I was the one that was always had the rule book. These are certain things you didn't do, did as a Christian, but the scripture doesn't plainly tell you that this is wrong. The things are clear on, it doesn't mean it's wrong for somebody to do just because your scruples dictate different. And so I was the one who's actually a weaker brother. And I was really surprised to find out. I hated to admit it, but I was one who had my rule book and was checking you out <laughs> to see if you were living according to my rule book. Yeah. And so God had to really deal with me as a, as a minister, as a teacher, to get out the, the, um, the judgment bar and sit down and realize that you're laying stuff on people that scripture does not actually forbid. This is your personal conviction. That's fine. But you don't have to hold other people accountable for that. You live your life, as the brother just said, Tyrone just said, you live your life to represent the kingdom of God. Because mm -hmm. your service and your, your attitude can sometimes change if someone's doing something that you disagree with, you can see it in their faces. And so we have to learn as Christians to um, always be, always uh, uh, have that love attitude, compassion attitude. If they're doing something wrong, is for us to always be, be express an uh, attitude of patience and love the same way God patiently loves us. So I have scruples about um, dancing because I associated dancing with my old life. And so my family's always trying to get me on the dance floor. And my scruples won't allow me to do that anymore. I associated my dance time with the time I got high, was the time I got drunk, and I associate that. So that's just to me. That doesn't mean that nobody should dance. It just means that that's something I just don't do because it's a part of my uh, weakness in the sense that I don't believe that I should be doing it. It's not part of what I used to be. So those are things we have to recognize in people. So don't pull people on the dance floor. <laughs> don't make people go to the bar with you because you should have a drink. If this is their scruple, let God deal with that person where they are. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, the, the um, <clears throat> uh, we think about the time, what Paul had to deal with. Paul had to deal with a lot of late, uh, legalism and that is um when uh one pursues good works in the hopes of earning favor with god and so um these individuals believe that they literally can save themselves through good works think about it paul was dealing with a lot of things yep. so think about it. a legalist believes that uh christ is finished work on the cross was not enough and they must somehow help Jesus out <laughs> you know how it is yeah so on the cross Jesus finished the work that was given to him to do only Jesus can declare it finished and Jesus has so we are dealing with a lot of things um in our in our lives and we want to put it off on others but the key is we must love one another as God has loved us. And we, we have to get back to the basic. That was a wonderful lesson. You brought out a lot of good principles, things that we can, you made it clear um, that there are things that we need to do, but it takes time. We are at work in progress. Um, um, people have been praying for us for a long time. It takes some longer than others, but we have to be humble and bear the infirmities of the weak. Yep. 
So you all be blessed. Um, I'm going to be on for a little while longer, but this was a wonderful lesson. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Man, great, great, great lesson, my brother. Um, I think if we were to sum up this lesson with one word, that word would be accountability. Mm -hmm. we, we, first of all, we are accountable to God, and you brought that out very well. We're accountable to ourselves, and we're accountable to others. What we do, as Brother Campbell says, uh, it does reflect our Heavenly Father, it does reflect the Christian community and how we treat others is how people perceive the whole body of Christ, but also our compassion. And, and that's what we have to remember is our compassion. I like the way Pastor Echoes said it. You know, we tend to see what other people do, and we want to judge them by our own rules and, yeah. and, and make them do the same thing we do at the same time we do, forgetting that some of the things we do, we didn't do them right away. Even when we first came into Christ, there were things that we held on to. Uh, and there were beliefs that we held on to, only to later find out they're wrong. There's nothing wrong with giving somebody the word of God, but everybody is not going to see the word of God the way we see it. And they're still going to hold on to some things. You know, uh, my mother-in-law's favorite scripture was, you know, to not let your good be evil spoken of, you know, and, and we can do that in a lot of ways. But if we hold ourselves accountable Right. If we if we judge ourselves more so than we judge others, then we can not let our good be evil spoken of because, you know, it is to me, it's a way to say that, um, you know, I'm not going to do something, even though uh, it's OK, even though I didn't mean it in the way that somebody else sees it. Somebody going to see what you do and judge you. And there are things that the world that people associate with worldly living. You know, you talked about smoking and drinking and gambling and all these things, even though the Bible does not specifically say they're wrong. The world sees them wrong for a Christian. Now, if I'm trying to set an example for a Christian, for a non-believer, then why would I be doing the things that are associated with the world? You know, in the same in the same token, why would I put myself as, as in a compromising position? You know, so that somebody can judge my character and say, well, you're not a Christian because you did X or you went here and did this, you know. So we have to hold ourselves accountable. And, and I just really like the way you introduced the lesson, the, the introduction to the lesson when you talked about your own personal life. And I just want to say this. Long before I knew you, I prayed before you. Long before I saw you, I prayed for you. And I saw the answer to that prayer. But to hear the different aspects from your own personal life just makes that prayer more real to me. Just like you prayed for your friend, and years later, you saw that prayer answered. God didn't make me wait a year. <laughs> you know, I waited so much, you know. But then to hear you say that I made a covenant with God and, and to really explain it, because I've heard you say it before, you know, that. If you allow me to walk, I'll walk for you. You know, that's a powerful statement, you know. But then this here that the very next day, you get an answer. We got a solution. That's the power of prayer. And that's what we forget, the true power of prayer. You know, and I like the way you tied that in about those personal covenants. Man, it was a powerful, beautiful lesson. And I thank you for it. I got so much out of it. And I thank you uh, for sharing. And I say it again over and over again. Thank you for making the lesson personal, sharing your personal testimony in the in the lesson. Uh, I get filled up. And I just thank God for it. God bless you. God bless. Thank, thank you. Brother Eccles, I got mm -hmm. one more statement. You mm -hmm. know, when you were talking about all things were created um, by God are clean, but they become evil when used by evil people. It's intent. Something to think on. The intent behind the usage is like what's the heart behind the matter. Um, right. But if it's not if it's not done out of love, it's not done under um, Christ's um, mindset. You're doing opposite of Christ. It is sin. 
anything you do against God is sin. Um, if you use it maliciously, it is a sin. Um, I mean, like you can go all the way to like gun safety. Um, is it a sin? Yes, to murder. Is it a sin to um, try to use your weapon as a, a form of intimidation? But if you use it justfully, if you use it to protect others, to, um, to protect somebody that um, is being attacked, if you're protecting your own household, that gun is not the sin. Um, it's the intent behind it. Um, weapons can be used justly or unjustly. And our, our models are weapons. Our, um, anything we can hold is a weapon. Um, that's a whole nother lesson. Um, I remember, I just had a thought back to when I was in the security of our previous church. Um, we had a guy come talk to us and pretty much it was like, he worked in jails. He was a cop for many years and literally anything you can hold can be turned to a weapon. A piece of paper he demonstrated could be used to kill somebody, um, and has seen it happen. Um, but it's what we do with our tools, what we do with our weapons. Is are we fighting for Christ? Or are we fighting for the world? As long as, there's no like, there's no like middle line that we pull off anymore. If you're not with Christ, you're against Christ. That's what it comes down to, and that's what we got acknowledge on a regular basis. Like, who are we doing this for? Am I serving myself or am I serving Christ? And all that we do, we need to be serving Him. But um, thank you for bringing out that point. Is there another? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to share my penny if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring it on a different viewpoint. Uh, we know in the Bible, it tells us that we can dance. Could David dance? Mm -hmm. The Bible said you can drink, but don't become a drunk. Yeah. And you had these rules, so you won't discourage new beginners but if you read some of these churches covenant church covenant they got in their church covenant do not dance do not drink and all these things that's their church covenant that's not the bible mm -hmm. but a lot of people take it as the bible mm -hmm. and so it limit them from doing a whole lot of things. And when they see other members of the church doing these things, it discouraged them mm -hmm. and a lot of them turn away. And that's why we shouldn't do things that's going to discourage new Christians because we don't want to be responsible for turning people away from Christ. But we also should teach people that the church covenant is the church covenant, it's something they put together. Because all church covenants are not the same. There's many different types of church covenants. Mm -hmm. And we have to let them start reading the Bible and see what's in the Bible. Bye, and um, so the saying. Old Testament, the Old Testament does have something in there about do not mark your body up in Leviticus 1928. However, don't refer to today's artwork on people's bodies, but a lot of people still take it to heart because in the Old Testament it said do not mark your bodies. And it, it was talking about in mourning. You know, a lot of people used to because it was in morning, you know, tear their clothes off, scratch their body. That's what it really was talking about. But if you don't dig deep into it, you take it as face value. And they say it's a, it's a pagan ritual. Yeah. And the Bible asks you not to do it in Leviticus 19.28. And a lot of older Christians who just studied the Old Testament uh, had a problem with it. Amen. Yeah, um, and I, I I thought about that for a while too. Um, I was like, if I get a tattoo of scripture on my arm, is that still a curse? Like, what what it's it's all comes down to what's the motivation behind it? 
Um, is it edifying? Is it going to build somebody up? Is it going to be uh, and that causes other people to sin? If it's going to cause other people to go forward that darkness, you shouldn't do it. Anything that's going to cause somebody else to go opposite of Christ is a sin. Um, like, so if you feel like a tattoo would, seeing the tattoo would cause somebody else to curse your name or feel like it's going to cause more issues, you probably shouldn't get that tattoo. Or if you already have it, cover it up. Um, even at my job, we, we dress more professionally. Um, there's people that have tattoos all the time. The, the, the thing is, as long as you can cover it up, you can still, have, like, we're not going to fire you for having a tattoo, especially since if we uh, hired you with one already. If you got a tattoo, make sure it's covered. Um, or if it's something you can't cover, um, they have different kind of makeups. Like you can't put a shirt over it. There's skin tone makeups. They got band aids. Um, especially if it's something offensive. Um, if it's not anything offensive, then who are you offending? Um, you no, know, brother. I, I think it comes back to what you said earlier uh, about personal convictions. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, that's what it comes down to. Um, as you as you put it, I like to put it those personal covenants. The scripture makes it clear: if we believe that something is a sin and we do it anyway, then it's a sin unto us. It's a sin to us to do that if we've been convicted not to do it. Uh, and that goes in a lot of ways. Yeah. i give you an example. Maybe you've been convicted not to say something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> and even though you got the right to say it, maybe even what you say might bear... Uh, have an impact on the situation or, you know, but you've been convicted not to say it, but you say it anyway, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then to you it's a sin. I mean, a lot of things that we do, we, um, it's, it becomes personal to us. You know, I, I just gotta, oh, I got to say that I can't just sit here and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got to run uh, my brothers and sisters. So I'm gonna say it early, y'all walk with the king. I'm gonna make brother Echoes uh, the host. And I have to run so I can be on time for service this morning. Yeah, amen. Yeah, we gotta get started ourselves. So um I'm close out. Um are any other comments? I'm just gonna make sure there's no more comments, questions, anecdotes, testimonials. Okay, so don't back. forget, even if your body is full of tattoos, Jesus still loves you. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 he sir. does. Thank you. Yeah. Why not decorate your um your kingdom, your your temple? I don't have it on my thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have them because I overthink everything, so I never got one. <laughs> <laughs> Can't decide on what something I, something I would want on my body forever, so I just never got one because I'm indecisive. But I have no issue with tattoos myself. But um, I don't like them because I don't like pain. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, my sister's a baby, so I know I could stand it. <laughs> um, so um, if there's no other comments, questions, I'm going to read um, next next week's lesson. is going to be called uh, Judgment in the Kingdom. Um, our teacher will be the beloved Beverly Eccles, First Lady of Kingdom Praise Ministries. Um, the devotional reading is Isaiah chapter 41, verses 1 through 14. The background scripture will be 1 Corinthians uh Chapter four, verses one through twenty-one, um, and I'm going to have my earthly father talk to my heavenly father to close out. Father, we're grateful today for the, be fed. We've been fed today, rolling out of the word, real practical stuff. So thank you for the word. Thank you for the facilitator. Thank you for the teacher. To the use of your glory. Thank you for everyone who's listening. We pray the word will fall, make our hearts fertile soil. So we want would not have wasted our time, but this time will be time we've invested time into becoming better Christians. So we thank you for your blessings, oh God, and commit our ways to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Walk with the king. <laughs> <laughs> be all that God called you today. God bless. <laughs>